Hey there, it's me Eden. Welcome to Cross-Dressing Adventure Stories. Today I'm going to share with you, cross-dressing adventure story called, Punishment, How Parents and Shop Owner Feminized Me. Part 1. So, if you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing, and please support my work, and buy me a coffee worth $1 only. Support link in the pinned comment. Thanks. I'm sitting here in a dress, my hair in a ponytail, wearing full makeup, quivering as my parents and the shop owner decided my fate and my future. I had broken into the dress shop, not to steal any money, but for some clothes that would fit me. Women's clothing. The silent alarm went off and the police caught me just as I finished getting dressed. In one sense I was lucky. The older officer was a training sergeant for a young female officer, he was about the age of my dad, maybe a little older. He didn't laugh or make fun of me in any way, but the female officer giggled when she first saw me, then, when he gave her a nasty look, she immediately stopped, which gave me just a glimmer of hope. I wasn't handcuffed but she sat facing me as the sergeant asked me my name, phone number, and so on. He did not ask me why I broke in, it was obvious. He made a few calls, one to the owner of the shop, and at her insistence, my parents. After a brief discussion, I was allowed to stay, the sergeant came over and told me, it'll be okay, son. Don't worry, then he and his partner left. It was ten minutes before my parents showed up. Ten very long minutes. The owner of the shop and I sat across from one another, just waiting, no words were spoken. Dad took one look at me and cringed, Mom merely shook her head. Now I was waiting for them to decide my future, which I just knew was going to be simply horrendous. My mother kept looking at me grimly silent, as dad and the owner of the store talked. Twice, both of them laughed, and I wondered what could be so funny. An hour later, still wearing those same clothes, I was taken home and told to stay in the family room, dressed, just like I was. Once I was at home, my parents stood side by side as I was told by my dad what my punishment was going to be. Since you broke in simply to steal these clothes, it's only fitting that you get a chance to wear them. In the morning your mother will get you up and help you get ready for school. After school you will report to the shop you broke into so that you can work off your debt to the owner. Is that clear? Dad. No. You could have gone to jail, and it's only because of the good heart of Ms. Wilson that you aren't. This is not a discussion of a should you, I'm telling you that you'll do it. Dad moved away and then spun around to face me. I can't even believe you broke into a shop, let alone do it to steal clothes and dress up as a girl. His face changed color from a deep red to normal as he calmed down. You are the one that wants to dress as a girl and that is exactly what you will do, and you will do so until your debts are paid. Understand? It was very clear. I nodded my head yes, and they left me to change and go to bed. I'm 16, a junior in school now. My name is Andy, I stand about 5 feet 7 inches tall and weigh maybe 135 pounds. In school I'm in the top 5% grade-wise, president of the debate team, member of the orators, and I can do most crossword puzzles easily. I had a reputation in other words. That was all going to be kicked in the face, and very soon. As I lay in bed trying to sleep it came to me all at once, and I knew they were going to dress me as a girl and send me to school that way. I sat up in bed, wondering if I should run away, 
but knew I could not. If I had any money, I would have bought the clothes rather than break in for them. For years, I had dreamed of dressing as a girl, wondering what it was like to be dressed in silk and satin, have the feel of nylon around my legs, wear high heels, makeup, and smell so nice. I had read the stories posted on the internet and thought I knew how to do it, create a girl that is. But I only had a desire. So, not having any money, I broke into that shop. It was stupid, I know, and now I was going to pay dearly for that mistake. I was about to skewer myself on the point of my own stupidity. In the morning, Mom came to my room prepared. As she set out what she brought to my room, I started to cry. I could feel the shame building inside, knowing I was going to be an outcast in just a few hours. Mom hugged me, then told me that when she was done, I would look as good as any girl in the school. I'm not sure this is the right thing to do, Andy. But your father is right. If you wanted to dress as a girl bad enough to break into a store, especially just to get clothes, then you should at least try doing it right. It took mom almost two hours to get me ready, from hair removal with a smelly cream to setting my hair in rollers with a gel to makeup and nail tips. She gave me a pair of panties to wear, the same bra I had on the night before. Which she padded with socks, and then pantyhose, the red and black pleated skirt I had on last night, the white blouse with the same short black heels. After she put red and gold earrings of hers in my ears and a thin gold chain around my neck, she gave me a spritz of her perfume. She handed me the bright red lipstick and watched as I put the waxy red on my lips, then handed me a black purse. Put your wallet and other things in your purse, along with the lipstick, and don't forget your books, Andrea. I snapped a look at her when she said Andrea, and she told me that was the name I was going to use. I was ushered out of the house to walk the five blocks to the school. I stood on the porch, frozen in place, knowing I could not stay there. Yet my feet refused to move. I saw my mother watching me from the window and took my first step, then one after another, until I reached the sidewalk. Looking back, Mom was waving to me, no smile on her face. I walked to the corner, turning right to the next corner. As I walked, the sway of my skirt. The sensation of my nylon-clad legs rubbing together and the taste of the makeup made me feel euphoric. It was my dream come true. Yet the closer I got to the school, the worse my fears became. The bigger the frog in my throat grew, and the more scared I became. Especially when I had to stand at the corner with so many kids waiting to cross the street, all of us converging on the school. I began to get desperate, looking for a way out of this mess, and almost turned around and ran when I was pushed into the building by the crush of kids. As they swarmed around me to get to their classes, I had no choice at all. I slowly walked to my class, acutely aware of each step, the sound of my heels clicking on the hard floors, growing louder with each step, my skirt seeming to grow shorter. Exposing me for the fraud I was, my fear grew with each step, knowing I would be cast out, no longer someone to admire or look up to. The scent of my perfume, gentle yet so feminine, followed me the entire way as my mind focused not on how I looked, but on what my growing fears were. I momentarily stopped at the doorway. Only to be thrust inside by the others wanting to get in. There was only one vacant chair, mine. I sat in my regular seat just as the teacher walked in. The room fell silent as she and the others looked at me. We have a new student, I see. What is your name, dear? Name. 
My name was Andy, but if I said that it would be worse than terrible. I struggled to say the name Mom told me, yet I was unable to speak. The teacher, Mrs. Roth, saved me from that embarrassment. Your mother called me at home last night and told me that a new student would be here today. Class, this is Andrea Grant. I wanted to sink into the floor. Some of the kids started to giggle, but the rest, mostly the boys, stayed silent. I had to endure the stares and muttered comments until we were released for our next class. On the way to my first class, my best friend John asked me what the hell was going on. I broke into a shop last night. This is the punishment, and no, I don't know how long I have to dress this way. By lunchtime, my reason for dressing as a girl was all through the school. I was branded a thief. Then dressing as a girl did not win me any friends, and I lost most of the ones I did have. Everyone seemed to avoid me. It was like I wore a scarlet letter on my chest. For the entire day, I was on the very edge of terror. Yet somehow, I began to forget about the skirt brushing my thighs, the tightness of the bra as it circled my chest, and my hair flicking at my ears. Tense. Yes. Afraid. Yes. Embarrassed. Yes. At lunch, to find some solace and peace. I sat alone, far to the rear of the room. As I tried to capture a few moments of solitude and privacy, only two students said anything to me. Both girls, Kelly, a short pudgy brunette, and Heather, one of the prettiest girls in the school. Hang in there, Andy. It'll get better. Heather touched my hand and told me to hold my head up. You look real nice, Andrea. We all make mistakes and pay for it. This is a different kind of punishment. That's all. If you need anyone to talk to, come see me or Kelly. Thanks, I said. And as they walked away to join their friends, I felt a tear on my cheek. Someone had actually talked to me. After school, I walked to the dress shop and went in, not knowing what to expect. The small bell on the door, a signal of my arrival. I stood in shame as she looked at me, my head hanging down. There you are, and so pretty too. Come in the back, dear. We have a few things to set straight. I followed her. Then once we were in the back of the shop. She told me her name. I'm Vera Wilson. Your parents and I have decided that letting you go to jail is not the best answer to our joint dilemma. Instead of that, you'll be working here in the shop with me. Every day after school until six, and all day Saturday. I'm not sure for how long yet, but certainly through the summer. She looked me over carefully, then handed me a bag. Go back there, put these on, and return to the front of the shop. I took the bag. Her words certainly through the summer ringing in my ears. Once I was alone, I opened the bag and found a beige padded panty brief and a pair of breast forms. Once I had the panty brief on. I put the breast forms in the bra and walked to the front of the store. The weight of the breast forms pulled on the straps of the bra, making me very aware of the way they bounced and felt. The color of them matched my skin tone so closely. Combined with my now wider hips, which made the skirt sway even more, they made me realize even more just how much I wanted to be a girl. Now don't you look so much better? I stood silent as she looked at me, my head down, deep in shame. You think this is cruel, don't you? I still hung my head in shame until she prodded me again, softly, almost a whisper. She told me to look at her. 
Well. Yes, ma'am. Hardly anybody will talk to me at school now. Her voice did not change tone as she spoke. You're the one that broke into the shop, Andrea. If you had simply taken money, you would be in jail right now. All you did was take some clothes so you could dress up as a girl. Her face softened a bit as she looked at the tears forming in my eyes. If you do what I say, I think you will be surprised at what happens at your school. I waited, wondering just what she was getting at, wiping a tear away. I'll bet that by the end of the week, if you let your mother and I help you, you'll look so good that the giggling will stop and most of your friends will stop shunning you. Then she gave me the details of my punishment that Dad did not tell me. That's all for now. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Oh yes, next part of this series will be published tomorrow. Please subscribe to my channel. And please, support me worth $1 only. Link in the comment and description.